Keep me safe and sound. Keep me safe and sound. Hold on, guys. Where is Shamunian, man? Come on, man. Sarai, are you watching? Hold on. I'm trying to find my channel, guys. I love you girls more. Hold on. Let me. I'm trying to send. Guess who's listening, girl, guys? My daughters are listening. So hold on. My daughters are listening, so I got to send them the link. And I want you guys to tell them you love them in a minute. Hold on. Let me see. They got it. Okay, Soraya, click on the link. My Soraya, my Zipporah, my two angels. I was talking to them. Now, I'm at my brother's place, so pray for the internet connection because it's terrible here. See? There it goes. See? Just like I said. See? like Just like I said, the internet connection is terrible here. So this is the best I can do, folks. Sorry. So sorry about that. Pray that internet connection stays strong. Otherwise, I'm going to have a heart attack because I'm here. Uh, by the grace of Jesus Christ. Okay, girls, if you're listening, just text me because people want to tell you they love you and they pray for you. Hold on, let me see. Hold on, guys. The internet connection is bad at my brother's place, so pray that God will bless us. He'll stay strong because I couldn't go to Childs of God's house and do the recording today. So either I was going to skip or take a chance. Just give me a couple more minutes, guys. We're just waiting. Let's see. Girls, are you listening? Text me so that I can tell the people to send you their love because they pray for you every day. See, the people are saying, we love you, girls. All right. I don't know. I guess they're listening. All right. Okay, guys. Do pray for the internet connection. Yeah. Let's see. Lord, bless the internet connection. Please, my God. Please, Father, we beg you in Jesus' name. Oh, should they're listening. In Jesus' name, please bless the connection. Okay, now, gir girls, read the comment section. They're listening. My Saraya, my firstborn, and my baby Zippy Zippers, they're listening. My 10-year-old, she's going to be 10 soon, and my 7-year-old. So now in the, text sec in the comment section, they're going to say, they love you. Every day we pray for you. Every day we ask Jesus to bless you and that we're going to be together. My daughter is asking me to be there for her birthday next month. We love you, girls. See, they're putting in the comment section, okay? Baba loves you, both you girls, and the people love you. Look, look, it's that Sarai and Zipporah. They're all saying, we love you. You see? How many people love you because they love Jesus and they love your Baba? Look, they go, ha, 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 LOL, heart attack. My daughter's laughing at me. We love you, Sarai and Zipporah, my zippy zippers, my Saraya. And Jesus loves you more. So just wanted you to listen. Every day we talk about you on my show. Every day we pray for you. And they love you, Mommy. They love you, both my girls. They love Jesus. And because they love Jesus, they love your Baba. And because they love the, your Baba, they love you. Right? Yeah. Please, my God. Please, Lord. Please, my God, I, I'm going to probably go crazy if the uh, Internet doesn't stay strong. Okay? Okay, guys, we're taking a risk by doing it here at my brother's place. The Internet is bad, but they're listening. So we'll say, Father, we love you. Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Father, we ask that you flood us <clears throat> in your infinite love, your compassion, and peace. Wash us in the blood of Jesus, the Lamb, your Son, and fill us with Holy Spirit. And, Father, we pray for our loved ones. And I pray for my girls. I pray for these two angels you gave me, a gift from you, a gift from Jesus, and a gift from the Holy Spirit. Father, flood them, flood us in your infinite love. Flood my girls, flood all of us and our loved ones in your Holy Spirit and fill us with your spirit. Wash my girls, wash us, our loved ones in the blood of Jesus. Keep us in love with you, Father, in love with Jesus, in love with your Holy Spirit. Give us the help we need, provide for us, and help us to make you happy. And Father, I want to thank you in Jesus' name for the two best Valentine's gifts you've given me on earth, my two daughters, my zippy zippers, my baby, and my firstborn, Soraya. Thank you, Father, for these gifts. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for these gifts. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for these gifts. 
let them know how much their Baba loves them and misses them. And we pray in Jesus' name, we're going to be together forever. And I will hug them and put them to sleep. Bless them, Father. Lord Jesus, bless them. Holy Spirit, bless them. And bless this session, Father. Use me to bless your people. Use me uh, to love your people. Use me by the Spirit to unpack the truth of Scripture. And Father, we need your grace for the internet connection. Save me from error. Anoint my mouth to speak truth clearly. Thank you, Father, Son, and Spirit, in Jesus' name. We love you. Amen. Yep. So they're listening, and they just sent me a beautiful picture. Let's see if you can see the picture. These are my hearts from Jesus. Look how beautiful they are. See that? Let's see if you can see it. Let's see. Okay, let's see. See that? Those are them right there. Let's see. Hold on. I just want to see. Okay, well, I'm trying. There they go. There they go. You see my two hearts? You see how beautiful they are? Tell me they're not a gift from Jesus. Hold on. Hold on. Let me do this again. Tell me they're not a gift from Jesus. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to synchronize this. You see my two hearts? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Yeah, the Lord blessed me with them. I couldn't ask for a better gift. Okay, my girls, I'll be teaching, and when I'm done, FaceTime me. Huh? Okay, Bobby, Bobby. They're still texting me. I just wanted you to guys to see and know that they're listening, and they're texting. You see, they, they missed their Baba. I love them. Baba loves you too much. You won't know how much Baba loves you. Though there's only one who loves you more than Baba loves you, Jesus Christ. Okay, girls? Okay, girls, I'm going to be teaching. So when I finish, you can FaceTime me. You don't know how much I love these girls and how much I miss them. So saints, please pray because you love me for the sake of Jesus. Okay, we're watching, you know. So, okay, Sir Ryan support. are you seeing it? Did you click on the link? Are you watching? Because I just showed them your beautiful picture. Just let me know that you can see. Sometimes uh, it's going to freeze. Okay. Okay, girls, I'll be teaching, okay? And when I'm done, you can call me. I love you, girls. You see where, uh, where my heart is after Jesus, right? First is Jesus and then them. Glory to God, Phantom, that Jesus Christ protected you. See, this one looks like me. Even the oldest one looks like me, right? See that zippy? They go, you look like your Baba, but you're prettier, even the oldest one. Folks, you don't know this, right? But pray for the internet connection so I don't go crazy because the, I'm here at my brother's place. I took a risk. I took a risk, so let's trust the Lord. He'll bless the internet connection. Please, Lord. Please, God, okay? Yeah. Please, my God, for your glory, you don't need me. Keep the internet connection strong, Lord. All right. Okay, with that said, we're going to trust the Lord. Here we go. Sorry, guys. I knew I shouldn't have taken a chance to do the session here. Hopefully no more here. God willing, this will be my last time doing live sessions here at my brother's place because the Internet's terrible. I'm about to throw myself out the window and destroy his computer. All right? Sorry, guys. Guys. Just let's wait a few more a few more minutes. It'll sink in like Protestant said. We'll begin. But hopefully, no, I, I moved to my new place. Monday I'll be there. But I'll be using Child of God's Internet Connection, where I've been in the last couple of sessions because it's much better until I get my own Internet. But anyway, we're going to do what we can. If it gets bad, it gets bad. As long as the quality of the picture is good and the sound is good on your end. You guys okay? All right. Right. Amen in Jesus' name, Gerson. So, guys, can you covenant with me and pray and fast? God has a miracle for my girls and I because my oldest was hoping I'd be there for her birthday next month. And I told her I won't be able to, but I promise you, I want to make up for every birthdays I missed. We're going to celebrate them all. Please covenant with me that God will do a miracle. Please. These girls miss their Bob and their Baba misses them. And I want to be in their life to raise Okay, folks, so Protestant, you're saying it's going to eventually sink in? 
the quality is going to get better eventually. So I said I should keep trucking. I'm trucking. Yes, indeed, I'm trucking. Yeah, I'm, like, scared to even proceed. I knew I should have just went. Okay, folks, we're going to trust by the grace of God. Eventually, the Internet connection will be. Yep, yep, yep. Let's see. Yeah, I'm getting upset with the internet, so let's keep freezing. Okay, before I begin, let me give you some links to some articles. Try this. Why is it down to? All right. Nothing happened. Nothing. Okay, Michalia, are you going to repeat this every time I do a live session to plug my computer into the modem? Is, is this going to be like something you're going to tell me every day? I don't know when, Michele, you're going to understand. I can't connect to the modem. I have a Mac. I need a special connector that I have to order to connect it. You're killing me, Michele. Why don't I do this, Michele? Why don't I connect my computer to your modem? I'm going to send this computer to your place, connect it to your modem. Every time, connect to the modem. Connect to the modem. And it's not just her. Everyone tells me that. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. Hold on. Connect to the modem. Connect to the modem. Okay. So, Michalia, send me your address in private. I'm going to overnight my Mac to you, connect it to your modem, and then start the live stream. And on the phone, I'll call you, and you can put me on Facebook, uh, FaceTime, and I can do the live stream from from. <laughs> oh my goodness, man! Okay, guys, hold on. All right, I don't know what to say, honestly, because it's the same old song with a different meaning. Now you've been every time. Hey, why don't you? Connect? And it's not just her. I'm not just picking on her, Michalia. It's not just you. Hey, uh, connect to the router and modem. Really? Man, okay. It's the same old song with a different meaning. Now you I don't actually, Michaelia. I don't think you want me as a guest in your house because then you're really gonna start praying for my salvation. Then you're gonna really pray for my salvation and. And really realize that I need to be saved, you know, because I'm a pathetic excuse for a Christian. Thank you, Carm. Lord Jesus bless you, sister. I know you were enjoying, you and your husband, your hubby, were enjoying when I was singing Elvis on stage. There you go again. Feel me a sin. This goes out to my two hearts from Jesus. Guys, tomorrow Valentine's. And guess who my Valentine's hearts are from Jesus? My firstborn and my baby. Those are my Valentine hearts from Jesus. Not to them, all right? There you go again. Heals on me a sin. We can hold together. Well, am I? And we can hold. Nate, you're not so great because you're always late and you ain't my mate. Okay. Hebrews 1 8, people. I don't know if you're going to be the first one. I really enjoy these self righteous people. You're not celebrating Valentine's, are you? Okay, uh, Hebrews 1 8. Christmas, brother? Do you celebrate Christmas? Just goes curious. These guys who think they're super spiritual, it, it's, it kills me, honestly, right? No, a hey, Protestant, I wasn't telling you to quote Hebrews 1.8. There's a guy in here named Rezion 1.8 telling me, you're going to uh, celebrate St. Valentine's on Valentine's Day? All right. All right, guys. All right, here are some links to some articles. These articles I just posted yesterday. 
because they're going to be the material I'm going to be using for my upcoming debate, God willing, March 19, March 19 in my upcoming debate, God willing, right? I'll be debating a Unitarian heretic, a son of Satan. May the Lord Jesus grant him repentance leading to life. I want to be debating him on whether the gospel of John teaches the deity of Christ. These are the sources that I compiled for my debate with the oneness heretic that I did in Florida. So I decided to post these notes because I was pretty much using the same arguments in my debate with the Unitarian heretic, this agent of the devil. May, may the Lord Jesus save him from his doctrine. Okay. I promise you, no more at my brother's place. The connection is terrible, right? The connection is terrible. But anyway, it was either that or no session till tomorrow. So here's the article, folks. This is the, These are the sources that I compiled for my date, debate with the oneness that I'll be using in my upcoming debate. Jewish sources on the word as a divine person. Guys, click on the link, save the articles, use the material. These materials will help you. Prove that not just the Hebrew scriptures, but even in Jewish tradition, rabbinic Jewish tradition and other Jewish sources, some of which predate the time of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> demonstrating that there were strands of Jew Judaism, certain Jews that believe that the Messiah is a divine being who pre-exists in heaven with God. Are you guys listening to me? These are Jewish sources, quotations from the Hebrew Bible and Jewish sources, okay? Jewish sources, okay? In which you'll find Jews believing in Messiah as a divine being who exists in heaven before he becomes man, who exists in heaven before he becomes man. Everyone with me there? Right. Everyone with me there? Did you get the first link? Okay. That's the first link. Here's another link. Judaism's views on the Messiah's pre-human existence. So here is another link. Click on the links. Read the materials. Use them in your Bible studies, in your witness, and pass them up. Okay. Here's the second article. Okay. Second article. Please do save the material. You have my permission. Let me say it again. You can download my videos. You can download my articles to your YouTube channel, to your website. Keep the name of the author and the name of the article intact. And don't sell them. Give them freely as you receive freely. Because if you sell them, I'm going to get 100% of the proceeds. And these are arguments that are battle-tested. We've used these arguments in debate successfully by the power of the Holy Spirit. These are the argument, arguments you need to learn because they are irrefutable. Now, what do I mean they're irrefutable? Meaning they cannot be honestly refuted. Yes, someone's going to try to explain them away. Someone's going to try to come up with an objection. But those objections do not refute these solid facts. They're simply desperate attempts of trying to get around these irrefutable facts. So a fact is a fact. And if it's a fact, you can't refute it. Doesn't mean people won't try to explain it away. Because if you're dead in sin, or if you've been convinced of a particular position or tradition, and or if you're controlled by the devil, then that will hinder you from accepting a fact for what it is. And that's where you need the Holy Spirit to set you free, illuminate you, and enable you to accept the truth and the facts. Okay? Is that clear? Yeah, and Stephen Atkins, good luck finding that honest Muslim. Just to let you know, Stephen Atkins is a Christian apologist and evangelist who served the Muslims for many years as a missionary. Though he's retired from the mission field, he hasn't retired from praying for Muslims. He hasn't retired from loving Muslims and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to Muslims. Stephen Atkins even has a debate with Shibra Ali, which you can watch online on YouTube. It's on YouTube. So pray for Stephen Atkins. Pray for his wife. 
They devoted their lives to reaching Muslims for Jesus. Those retired from the mission field, he still preaches the gospel to Muslims and he still prays for them and loves them. Okay. Okay, I love you girls. My daughter just sent me a message saying they're going to do their homework. I love you girls. Call me later and we're going to be praying for you. The world prays for you because they love you girls, because they love your Baba, because they love Jesus. Man, do I love these girls. Guys, if you're a parent, you'll know. You don't know how deep my love are, uh, is for these girls, how I ache for them and I love them. They're the, they're, put it this way, folks. I got one more article to give you. If these girls weren't on earth, then I would ask Jesus Christ to cover me by his blood, wash me in his blood, fill me with the spirit so that my sins are removed and take me home. I'd rather, and I mean this when I say this, may he destroy our fear of death and trust in his grace. I would rather leave this world and be with Jesus because I'm tired of this world. I'm sick of this world. It's too corrupt, too evil, too broken, too damaged, too demonized. And I'd rather be with Jesus and enter my everlasting peace, dwell in the presence of Jesus, my Lord, who loves me, who's in love with me, so I can kiss his holy feet and be embraced in his arms, flooded in his love, and to see, please, Father, strengthen the internet connection. Okay, sorry about that. And be in that heavenly company of those believers who've gone before me so that I can have fellowship with Paul and Peter, John, and all these great men and women of the faith, Ignatius, Athanasius, who are now in the presence of Jesus, more alive than us, free of all sin. And I'm going to share this with you guys, and I'm going to share that because we're going to begin. This is all to prepare us, guys. The internet seems to be getting better, and I pray it does, okay? I'm going to share some with you guys. And I don't just say it to say it in front of you. I mean it. My heart's desire is to see Jesus, the one who loves me, who's in love with me, because he is my heart. He is my love. I love him imperfectly, and I'm ashamed to say this. And I fail him, and I'm a miserable excuse of a Christian. But I can tell you, I cannot imagine life without Jesus. I cannot imagine life without serving Jesus. I can't imagine not loving Jesus. I can't. I honestly mean that from my heart. I can't. And you guys know if you're born of the Spirit, you know Jesus, you, you understand. I can't, right? So I want to see him first. And then there are two blessed human servants, truly beloved of Jesus, that I want to see. When I enter heaven by his grace, and only by his grace we can enter because of his righteousness. The two individuals I want to see, I'm talking about among creation. Obviously, Jesus is heaven. He is our heaven, and we want to see him. But the two individuals I want to see. Yeah. Come on, I can do more. Come on, I shut down, please. I don't want to shut down. Okay, that's it. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Okay, you didn't hear who I wanted to see, right? See, that's look at Satan. We rebuke you by the blood of Jesus, by the authority of Jesus, by the power of Jesus. He has crushed you and damns you to hell in Jesus' name. Yep. Okay. Well, it keeps going out. So I guess the enemy is upset. See? See? Amen. We'll see. If it gets bad, it gets bad, folks. Then I don't know what to do. Anyway. I don't know who's calling me. Hello? Hello? Okay, goodbye. I guess I got a secret admirer. I don't know. Okay. It's going to go out again. Watch, guys. It's going to go out again. Right when I give you the names. Okay. Right? Okay. The two people I want to see when I enter glory, when I enter heaven, here you go. You guys ready? 
Let's see if it's going to go up. As long as the sound is good and the picture is good. You know who? I want to see the Apostle Paul, my hero. I love that man. And when I think about what Jesus did through him and his love for Jesus, it moves me to tears. I love that man. He's my hero. And then you know who I want to see? You know who I want to see? And I'm not just saying in front of you guys. And I pray the Lord Jesus will bless the connection. And we're going to begin. If it gets bad, folks, I'll just have to do it tomorrow. The Blessed Mother of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Mary. How'd you guys know? People don't know this, but let me tell you something. I love her. And I'm not saying this because I'm special. Anyone who loves Jesus has to love his mother. I love her. I love her. I'm in love with her. I love her more than my own mother because she's the mother of my Lord. Even when I think about her, I have to hold back tears. And I just want to see her, right? <clears throat> My beloved mother, the mother of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I just want to see her and receive the blessing of being hugged by her. Receive the blessing of being hugged by her. That the woman who held my God in the flesh, who held that baby who was God in the flesh in her arms, who kissed his face, who bathed him, who fed him, who clothed him, <clears throat> I want to be held by her. <clears throat> I want her to hold me too. Let me just say, beloved mother, I love you. <clears throat> right? So if I, if I didn't have these two girls, what was my point? If I didn't have these two girls on earth, I would say, Lord, take me. But the reason why I want to stay, and, and Jesus doesn't need me to minister. He'll raise up better people than me. We don't have my issues and cause people to stumble. I want to stay because I want to be there for my girls, to see them grow up, to be godly women, to fall in love with Jesus, and then I die before them and take me home. Lord, take me home. I just feel broken for them that they had to go through this. Unfortunately, I didn't want this for them, a broken home. I wanted more for them. Right? So... All right, with that said, let's begin in Jesus' name. This is an article for those Christians witnessing to Muslims. This is turning an objection of the late Ahmadi Dad against him. Okay, against him. Guys, I think I'm going to probably shut down, man. It's really bad. Doesn't get better. I'm, I'm out of here, buddy. No matter. Yeah, if it doesn't get better, I'm just going to shut down. It's it's getting ridiculous. I don't know why his interaction is so terrible. I don't understand why my brother's internet is terrible, man. It's pathetic. It was at least somewhat better before. It's gotten worse. And yeah, it's frustrating. Okay, uh, Fred. Let me let me share. Let me ask you something. You know, if I rebuke the computer, this session's gonna end, right? You know that, right, Fred? So why don't I follow your advice, Fred? I know you mean well. Let me just reboot my computer, and then the connection is the is this session's gonna end. So I have to start from scratch. Fred, why don't you help me by not helping me? Okay, sort of truth. I just said I turned off the Wi-Fi on my phone. Okay. See, I, and honestly, I'd say this, to be honest. Some of you need to think before you give me advice. And I'm saying this in all honesty. If I reboot my computer, guess what? This session ends. So think about that first. Wait, if he reboots the computer, this session ends. Hmm. Maybe he shouldn't reboot the computer. Allahu Akbar. Okay. Anyway. Let's see if it's going to last. Now, did you guys get that link? I posted it three times. This is the link to another article for the Christians witnessing to Muslims. It's changing. It's using the late Ahmadidat's argument against them, asking him which Quran, which Quran. There isn't one Quran. There are many Quran. So which Quran is the words of Allah, even though Allah is not God? So did you get that link? 
Do you get that link? You save that link? All right. Let's begin. Let's see. Now we're taking a step of faith. This was all preparatory warm-up. I want to finish discussing what I began two sessions ago. Keep in mind, folks, you've asked me also to, to do the biblical basis for the Nicene Creed. Lord willing, sometime next week, I'm going to start with the Nicene Creed. And Lord willing, I'm going to be revisiting the issue of the eternal begetting of the Son. The eternal begetting of the Son. Because I was asked to do the Nicene Creed. I'll do it. But here's where I'm going to need you to pray and ask the Lord to prepare you guys for it if God wants me to do it, to prepare me. We're not all going to agree. We're not going to all agree on my exposition of the Nicene Creed. Protestants will disagree. The Orthodox that come here will disagree. The Roman Catholics come here will disagree. So here's what I ask. I don't want you to agree with me. People think that you have to agree with me to stay here. No, no, no. You can agree to disagree with me, and you can say I'm wrong. All I'm asking is hear me out, ask the Spirit to show you where I'm wrong, and to show me where I'm wrong and convict me to re repent of those mistakes and bring me into the fullness of the truth, and then reject what you think is wrong and accept that which you think is right. That's all I'm asking. But don't come here and attack me, belittle me, Challenge me and fight with me. Don't do that. Just hear me out and say, Sam, I don't agree with you. Keep it to yourself. That's fine. I don't agree with you, Sam. That's okay. Keep it yourself. Obviously, if I thought it was wrong, I wouldn't share it. Obviously, if I thought it's wrong, I won't preach it. It's obvious that I think I'm right here, which is why I'm sharing it. And fighting with me and arguing with me won't get me to see your point. Right. What you do is ask the spirit to show you where I'm wrong and convict me to show me where I'm wrong and to repent of it and never repeat it again. OK. And folks, I have changed my positions over the years. I have. Many people can testify who know me. When I pray to the spirit, asking the spirit to guide me into truth, show me where I'm wrong and humble me enough and give me the grace to change. I have changed my views. At least I'm someone who can tell you I have changed when I've been convinced I was wrong. Now, some people think when I changed my position, I went from truth to error, that I didn't change for the better. I actually changed a position that was right, and now I'm wrong because I'm not going to satisfy everyone, and I don't want to satisfy everyone. My commitment is to Jesus and his word, the Bible. I want to make him happy and be faithful to his word, even though I'm imperfect. See, now notice what he just said. Red Spartan, brother, are you listening to what I just said? There are Christians who love the Trinity, who believe the Finioke is biblical. You just call them heretics. You see, and you know what's ironic? Here's what's ironic. The Protestants get the bad rap of attacking other denominations or churches, like Roman Catholics or Orthodox. They get the bad rap of being divisive and condemning other churches, especially churches that claim to be apostolic. And yet you'll find that among Orthodox, among Coptics, among Nestorians, among Zerom Catholics, doing the same thing to other churches. See, now notice what this guy said. It's not a heresy. No, it is a heresy. See? So Protestants and Roman K, they're heretics. Okay, hold on. Okay, did you catch it? Protestants and, and, and Roman Catholics are heretics because they believe in the filioque. Filioque. What do you say to stuff like this, man? Now, if it's a core essential doctrine that affects your salvation, then I can understand why you'd say that. But if it's a doctrine that's secondary, where Christians have debated it because they don't believe that the Bible supports that other position, right? That's a different story. 
If it's a core essential doctrine that does affect whether you can be considered a Christian, then we don't compromise. You know what a core essential doctrine is? Do you believe in the Trinity? One eternal God and three eternal divine persons. Yes. Amen. Now, how you understand the relationship of the divine persons? You can agree to disagree as long as you affirm they are three uncreated divine persons of the Godhead and only three. If you believe Jesus is the God man, amen. You believe he was conceived and born from a virgin by the power of the Holy Spirit without sexual intercourse, amen. He died for sinners, was raised physically, bodily, were returned. See, these are core doctrines of the Christian faith, right? Getting the Christian faith, getting the gospel right, core doctrines of the Christian faith. These are non negotiables. These are non negotiables. Okay? So even though I reject the filioque, I don't consider those who believe in it to be heretics. And I hope they don't consider me to be heretic, a uh, heretic. Right? You get my point? I think I'm actually more generous and gracious to the different. Christians among these different branches of Christianity than some of the Orthodox, Roman Catholic, and Cop Coptics are towards one another. Yeah. Notice what he just said. It destroys the Trinity because it gives two sources. No, it doesn't. They'll say, no, it doesn't. Because the Father and the Son possess the same essence, and that essence is communicated to Spirit by the Father through the Son. You see, I just shut down your false assertion, Ioannis. Because the deity of the Father is communicated through the Son because the Father doesn't do anything apart from the Son. See, I just destroyed your argument. Because you're used to hearing one side, not the other. You think you got an airtight argument. You see? So the deity is one. But the communication of that deity to the Spirit is from the Father through the Son. Because the Father does nothing apart from the Son. I don't consider it a heresy like you do, Red. You're saying heresy meaning it's damnable, right? Hold on. I'm going to get into the uh, meat of the matter. When you say heresy, it's damnable, right? So now look at how what a wicked human being is. So you're saying the Roman Catholics, there's no one saved in there? So you are now even more staunch anti-Catholic than Protestants? Prior to the schism in 1054, prior to the schism before, before 1054, isn't it true that the Western Church, prior to the schism in 1054, isn't it true that the Western Church believed in the filioque, but the Orthodox was still in communion with the Western Church? Just wanna, I just want to hear you say it. Sorry, guys, that we get into these tangents because people here come in and pontificate thinking they have perfect knowledge of, of theology. Red, answer my question. I'm going to block you because you're being a coward now. Answer my question. The schism in 1054. Weren't the Orthodox in communion with the church in the West, even though the church in the West held to the filioque? Before, let's see. So you said yes, right? Okay. Yes. So you just said your bishops and your patriarch before the schism were in communion with a church that was promoting heresy. So you just damned your bishops and your patriarch to hell for not breaking away from them the moment they accepted the filioque. You see how stupid you sound right now? You see my problem with you now? So all your bishops and patriarchs were in sin prior to the schism for being in communion with a bunch of heretics who posited two sources to the deity of the Holy Spirit. Do you see how stupid you sound when you don't think critically, but you're a blind parrot? You get my point? Okay. So why don't you just shut up and listen 
Stop trying to cause division and let's focus. Okay? Sorry about that, Anna Growing Anana. But like I said yesterday, you got jerks in every denomination. You got jerks among Protestants, and people consider me one. I don't blame them. You got jerks who are Roman Catholics, jerks who are Orthodox. Okay? See, people don't think critically because they're stupid. Because up until 1054, the Western Church and the Eastern Church were in communion. Orthodox and Roman Catholic were still one church. Even though the Western Church added the filioque in the 6th century and ran with it. Now, someone tell me I'm wrong. I don't know, Anna. You don't say something contrary to fact, sister, because up until this time, you're loving me. Now you're going to start hating me. So here, answer this, Anna. Here's what I need an answer. Here's what I need an answer. Okay. Is it not true the Eastern Church was in communion with the Western Church up until 1054? That's all I want an answer for. The Eastern and Western Churches were in communion up until the 11th century. No, no, the, the, it doesn't matter for reason. Once you say yes, you just confirm my point. Because at least from the 6th century, the Western Church added the Filioque Clause to the Nicene Creed, meaning they're reciting the Filioque from the 6th century, 7th century, 8th century, 9th century, 10th century, until finally you guys broke off. Where am I wrong? What schism if you didn't break away from the Western Church until 1054? So you're saying one man, Photius, in the 9th century started a schism that everyone ignored because they're still in communion with Western Church till 1054. That's why it's called the Great Schism. That's when you officially broke away from... Okay, hold on. Okay, guys, they're saying no. All right, okay, hold on. Sorry, guys, I had to waste time on this. Here you go. Okay, there you go. But even if we go with the 9th century, 6th century, 7th century, 8th century, 300 years, you're communing with a bunch of heretics. Here you go. Now they're saying I'm wrong, right? All right. Here you go. What source should I quote? Should I quote Britannica? Should I quote Wikipedia? What source do you guys want me to quote that you broke away officially and this associated with the Western Church in 1054? You were still in communion until the 11th century. What do you want me to quote you? I got dozens. I don't have any history books with me to show it, so I have to use the internet. Okay. Anyway. Now, with that said, send Red Baron, Red Moron, whatever his name is, on his merry way because of the controversy he just started. Guys, just simply don't take my word for it. Thank God for Google. Yeah, Wader Wood, why don't you get me some top-notch internet? I need you to send me money to get some top-notch internet because I keep buffering, buddy. Okay. Hater Wood, if I made your money, I'd have top-notch internet. Okay. Just go to Sheikh Google because I don't have any of my books. In fact, unfortunately, my books are in boxes. If you just want a real quick way of confirming. Put in 1054 Great Schism. Don't take my word for it. Even if we go with Photius in the ninth century, a schism, you're still confirming you're in communion with the Western Church in the 6th century, 7th century, 8th century. For 300 years, you're in communion with a bunch of heretics who believe in the filioque. So you're not going to get around this problem. You think you guys are. You're not. You're stuck in the problem. Okay? For the rest of you who don't understand what I'm talking about, let me, let me bring you in on the conversation. For the rest of you who don't know about the schism, you guys interested if I take a few minutes to educate you? It's the Orthodox versus the Roman Catholic. Okay, Here, here for the rest of you, the Orthodox churches versus the Roman Catholic church. Okay, here's the debate. There's something called the filioque. If you read the Nicene Creed from <clears throat> the Western version, the Western version of the Nicene Creed. The Western version. There is a clause in the creed that says, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, 
who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped, who spoke through the prophet, prophets, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. That's the Western version, and the Son. That's called the Filioque, okay? The Eastern Church rejects that part. So the Eastern version of the Nicene Creed, the Eastern version of the Nicene Creed says, who proceeds from the Father, not and the Son. Okay. It is true historically that the original Nicene Creed said that the Spirit proceeds from the Father. It was only, I believe, around the 6th century. So I'm going by memory, so don't condemn me if I'm wrong. In the 6th century where that clause, the Filioque and the Son, was added to the Western version of the Nicene Creed. That became one of the issues that caused a rift between the Eastern Orthodox churches, the, the Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church, until that schism or rift became full-blown in 1054 AD. So these two communions, or these two churches, they're not communions, I'm sorry, split over a variety of issues, one of which is the Eastern Church, the Orthodox Church said, you are wrong to say the Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. You with me there? This is the debate. That's why you had that Orthodox saying, it's a heresy to say, proceed from the Father and the Son. Okay? But if you remember what I said yesterday, remember what I said yesterday? Okay. How did you stop communion, Anna, when the Western Church added the Filioque in the 6th century and were reciting it, and you didn't split until 1054? Help me understand history because the sources I'm quoting show I'm right here. I just told you that the Filioque was added in the 6th century. So you broke communion in the 6th century? Give me the sources to confirm it. Anyway, everyone with me what the debate is? See, I'm going to have a debate with Anna. And I'm now going to quote Roman Catholic sources to say that the historic position of the church has been that the father and the son's son have, have communicated the deity of the spirit to the Holy Spirit. And they quote early church fathers to prove their position to show that this is what the church has always believed. But now you're telling me they didn't even believe that in the sixth century. Hold on, guys. Sorry, guys. I told you I'm not going to be able to please everyone. And I hope I never please everyone if it means displeasing Jesus. I'm going to be honest to the truth to the best of my ability. But here, Anna just said, okay, here. Watch here. See, this is what I see, guys. By the way, side note. Side note. Here you go. Side note. This is why when you have people appearing to the church fathers, it proves nothing. Do you know why? Methodius, don't get into a discussion with, with Sola Scriptura because I'm going to have a field day with you. Keep the focus. Okay. The Orthodox appeal to the church fathers. The Coptics appeal to the church fathers. The Nestorian churches appeal to the church fathers. The Roman Catholics appeal to the church fathers. So for the, those of you who hear, like say, Roman Catholic appeal to the church fathers, re realize the Orthodox appeal to the church fathers. And you just heard they're not in communion. Because Orthodox thinks the Roman Catholics lost their way and they became heretics. The Roman Catholics will appeal to the church fathers to prove the filioque is the belief of the apostles. The Orthodox will quote the same church fathers to show the filioque was not believed by the early church. That's so not from the apostles. So you see when they appeal to the church fathers, it doesn't solve problems and introduces new ones. You with me there? Here's a link from a Roman Catholic apologist refuting the Orthodox saying the Filioque is historical and biblical. It was taught by the apostles. Here you go. Let me click on the link again. Okay. Hold on. Let me give you the link, not click on it. Let me give you another one. Here's another one. Here you go. 
Okay, a Roman Catholic apologist who was a okay. Sorry, guys, if it keeps. Yeah, if it keeps getting bad, I'm going to shut down, folks. All right, here. A Roman Catholic apologist who was a Protestant. He was a Protestant, became Roman Catholic, debating on the Filioque and demonstrating from the church fathers the Filioque is biblical, historical, and apostolic. Do you guys see the link? Here, here you go. You got it there? Save these links. You see what happens when you either are born into a tradition or believe in a tradition? And your tradition can do no wrong, and everyone else that disagrees is automatically wrong. Are you catching it here? Right? The Spirit, Anna. Deity of the Spirit. Finds its source in the Father through the Son. Sorry about that. Sorry. We're not talking about sending the Spirit into the world. We're talking about the Creed when it says, proceeds from the Father and the Son. That means, that part me is saying, the deity of the Spirit is from the Father through the Son. From the Father through the Son. From the Father through the Son. It's talking about His eternal procession, not Him being sent into the world. Anna, why are you mentioning to be sent? We're not talking. We're talking about the creed. No one's talking about the spirit being sent into the world. This entire discussion was about the creed. The creed. Yeah, exactly, Anna. Now we're after going to say, in all honesty, you're not listening now, sister. You're a good sister. Lord bless you, and I love you for the sake of the Lord. But you're not listening because you're trying passionately to prove your point, and you're not seeing the other perspective. Okay. Anna. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm wasting my time. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. You see why I pray to be a biblicist, folks? Okay. You see why I pray to be a biblicist? And we also drop some people. Okay. Let me tell you why I pray to be a biblicist. You guys wanna you wanna you wanna see why I, I pray to be a biblicist? Once you buy into a particular structure, system, or tradition, you are handicapped because you can't let the Bible or history speak freely. You're gonna have to make the Bible and history agree with your structure, your tradition, and or your assumptions. You, you understand my point, folks? Everyone and his mother is guilty of it. Protestants are guilty of it. Baptists are guilty of it, which are part of the Protestant tradition. Calvinists are guilty of it. Arminians are guilty of it. Orthodox are guilty of it. Catholics are guilty of it. Once you subscribe to a particular tradition, a structure, you can never be free to let the Bible speak and let the Bible change and correct you and you can never let the church fathers say what they said. You're always going to have to filter everything through your tradition to make it fit. You understand? Did you know when I realized I was doing it? And I'm going to offend the Calvinists here. Do you know when I realized I was doing it? The Calvinists are going to get upset with me. See, I'm an equal opportunist defender. I offend everyone. I realized it when I was a five-point Calvinist. When I was a five-point Calvinist, I tried to force the Bible agree with every aspect of TULIP. Did you know that? It had to agree. And I had to explain so many passages that pose challenges to the five points of Calvinism, at least from my understanding. Right? So... By the grace of God's Spirit, working on my conscience, working in my heart, convicting me, I said, I'm not going to call myself a five-point Calvinist anymore. I'm done. I'm done with labels. The only label I want to be associated with me is a biblicist. Now, we all claim to be biblicists. 
But I am finally free, folks, by the grace of the Holy Spirit, to let the Bible say what it says. I don't have to make it agree. But I am sensitive, and I try not to be unnecessarily offensive to others who have a particular view of Scripture, right? I try to be sensitive and acknowledge your view is an acceptable view within the pale of Christianity, even though I may disagree with it. With me there? Everyone with me there? Anyway, sorry about that, folks. Sorry that I wasted your time so far. Was it a waste of time on this issue? Okay, hold on. Let me give you another link. Okay. Here's another link on, on the filioque. Okay. okay, guys. You saw it, right? I gave it to you. It's Tim, Tim Staples, right? Folks, I'm just going to read this article. Guys, please bear with me. Tim Staples, a former Protestant minister who became a Roman Catholic apologist. Tim Staples, a former Protestant minister, became a Roman Catholic apologist. Because now he's bought into the Catholic system, he has to make the Bible and, Catholic, uh, and church tradition agree with Catholicism. Now watch this. Here's a man who's now going to prove the Orthodox Church is wrong, that the church fathers agreed the spirit proceeds from the father and the son. Okay? What's his evidence? Tim, what's your evidence? Let's go here. I just gave you the link. Okay? Let me just show you here. Okay. Tim says... Yeah, Kazakh, I actually wrote an article for Catholic Answers magazine. You can find online at catholic.com called Defending the Filioque. Oh, wow. Wait, 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 wait. You wrote an article proving that the statement that the Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son, that's biblical, apostolic, believed by the church fathers? But the Orthodox are telling me, no, you're wrong. Are you seeing it? You catch it here? There it goes. So let's go to that article. So you asked for it, folks. You couldn't leave a good thing alone because of that Razzle Dazzle guy, whoever his name is. Not Razzle Dazzle. Okay. okay. Here you go. I'm just going to go to the salient section. Okay. And see what he says. Let's see here. The affirmation of the Filioque does not appear in the Creed and Confess in 381 at Constantinople. But Pope St. Leo I, following an ancient Latin and Alexandrian tradition, had already confessed it dogmatically in 447. So he pushes it now to the 5th century. Okay? That a Pope affirmed the Filioque in the 5th century. 447, folks. Okay? Let me keep reading. Okay. Quam laudo... Biliter. Even before Rome, in 451, at the Council of Chalcedon, came to recognize and receive the symbol of 381. The use of this formula in the creed was gradually emitted into the Latin liturgy between the 8th and 11th centuries. Okay? Now, let me just see. Does he quote? What does the Bible say? So he gives you biblical verse. Put it aside. I want to see. I want to see if he's giving church fathers. Let's see. Interesting. Let's see. So, folks, he quotes Augustine. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father as principle, and through the latter's timeless gift to the Son, from the Father and the Son in communion. But wait, the Orthodox don't like Augustine. They reject him. But now what does he do? Ask the fathers they know. Far from rejecting the theology of the filioque, many of the fathers of the church, both East and West, taught it. In the West, we have Tertullian which also some question whether he's a father, St. Hilary po Poitier, St. Ambrose, and St. Augustine, all teaching the theology of the Filioque anywhere from 600 to 800 plus years before the final Orthodox schism in AD 1054. Now, who should I believe, Orthodox? Who should I believe? It's okay, Radioactive. Folks, did you hear it? A Roman Catholic apologist, used to be Protestant, appealing to the same church fathers, 
Same church tradition is still orthodox. We love you, but you're dead wrong. The filioque was affirmed even in the third century. Tertullian, Heliopotiers, Ambrose, and Augustine, though you reject him. And Pope Leo affirmed it long before the schism. We are right. You are wrong. Repent. See? Also corrects. Now, notice what Ioannis just said. You see this, the circular reasoning? Thank you, Ioannis. You just proved my point. Ioannis, you just proved my point. Did you see what he just said? He's asserting, not proving. And that's what he accuses you of. Thank you, Ioannis, proving the point I just made. You all appeal to the fathers, and you accuse the others of misinterpreting the fathers. So your appeal to the fathers doesn't prove anything. Thank you, Ioannis. You just proved my point. Thank you. And I want everyone else to see this. Did you guys see it? Did you guys see it? This Orthodox said that Catholic isn't proving his assertion. He's just asserting it because the fathers don't agree. But that Catholic says that about him. They're both appealing to the fathers and accusing the other of hijacking the fathers, misrepresenting them. Thank you, Iwanis. And Iwanis, you have to say he's wrong because you are wedded to a tradition that you can never question because you'll be thrown out of your church if you do. You get my point? You understand? You have to say he's wrong because you are wedded to a tradition that you can't question because I guarantee you question it, you'll be thrown out of your church. This is why it is so beautiful to have the freedom of being a biblicist. Really, Ioannis? So, Ioannis, can you even consider the possibility the filioque is right, the church fathers taught it? Is that even a possibility? Can you say, yeah, that's possible? Say it because I want this recorded and I want your comments recorded for perpetuity. Say it. It's possible. It's possible. So where is he wrong? Was Augustine, did Augustine say the spirit proceeds from the father through the son? Was, it, was he wrong in saying Augustine taught it? See, we went into an issue for now. Guys, I apologize for the rest of you. This is what happens when you have troublemakers. I just read it. You want me to read it again? Do you want me to read it one more time? Do you want me to read it one more time? Okay, let me read it one more time. And by the way, one of your church, your Orthodox brothers misrepresented what the Catholic Church teaches. And this is another thing, folks. You'll have the lay Orthodox, lay Catholics, lay Protestants falsely accusing the other of believing something they didn't. Did you hear what that Orthodox said? They believe in the, oh, it was Ioannis. Yeah, you're the one. And I'm going to say shame on you. You said that the Catholics believe in two sources to the, Deity of the Holy Spirit. Tim Staples just said, you're a liar. He said, no, we don't believe that. There's a single source. It's the Father. But the deity of the Father is communicated through the Son. That means I accurately represented the Roman Catholic tradition, and you misrepresented them, sir. You misrepresented them. They do not believe there are two sources to the deity of the Spirit. It's a single source. But that deity that comes from the Father is communicated through the Son to the Spirit. But the source is the Father. So why did you misrepresent them? Iwanis, after I quote Augustine, I'm throwing you out of here. Hold on. Guys, get ready. Just listen. Don't go anywhere. I'm not going to give it to you, and I'm going to throw you out of here. Here you go. St. Augustine de Trinitate. De Trinitate. Okay? Let me quote it here. And you're out of here for misrepresenting the Roman Catholic Church and for not believing a citation when I read it. Here you go. Read it, Ioannis. And we're going to say bye-bye, Tikanis. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father as principle and through the latter's timeless gift to the Son from the Father and the Son in communion. You got busted. That's Augustine. Get out of here now, Ioannis. Bye-bye. Tikanis, kasikala. Okay. 
for those of you who don't understand what's going on, I really want to apologize to you. I hope this wasn't a distraction. I hope this wasn't a distraction. I hope this didn't upset you, but it showed you the importance of knowing the issues. And you don't have to be ex expert at church history because I'm not. But at least watch videos on church history or get books summing up church history because you need to learn this. And one thing I want you to take away from this. Here's what I want you to take away. Are you ready? Here's what I want you to take away from this. Are you ready for what you need to take away from this? If my, it's, the buffering stops. If the buffering stops. Let's see. <whistles> Guys, the buffering's bad. I promise by the grace of God I won't do it in my brother's place anymore. But let's try to endure at least to get a session. And we don't lose this session. You guys want me to delete this session or keep it? You want me to show, should I still keep the session? Keep it or delete it? Okay. Now, here's the two things I want you to take away. Everyone and his mother appeals to the church fathers. And they do so to prove their tradition over against another tradition. You saw that here, right? I just gave you several links from Roman Catholics appealing to the church fathers to show their right in understanding that this, the spirit proceeds from the father and the son. The Orthodox will quote the same church fathers to show their right and the Roman Catholics are wrong. Did you catch it? In other words, don't be duped by appeals to the church fathers. They're all claiming the fathers for themselves over against the other traditions. The fathers don't solve the problem. They introduce additional problems. Get Benjamin Wolf out of here because this dog needs to follow the pack. Okay? That's number one. The second thing, point I want you to take from this. This is why pray the Holy Spirit guides you to become a biblicist. Are you with me there? Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the glorious freedom from the Spirit to follow the Bible wherever it takes you. But here's the problem, folks. If you're wedded to the Baptist church, you can't let the Bible speak freely. If you're wedded to the evangelical church, you can't let the Bible speak freely. If you're wedded to Arminianism, you can't let the Bible speak freely. If you're wedded to Calvinism, you can't let the Bible speak freely. If you're wedded to Orthodox, you can't. Because once you accept a particular system or theology, theology, tradition, you're stuck. And you're going to make the Bible agree with your tradition. And I say this, and may the Lord do, destroy my flesh, crucify my flesh. I am free from denominations. Glory to the triune God. I don't call myself a Baptist or a Calvinist, or an Arminian. I try to follow the Bible as best as I can by the grace of the Holy Spirit, though I do it imperfectly. That's why I can accept something that Orthodox believe, if it's biblical, something that Catholics believe, if it's biblical, even if it goes against Protestantism, and why I can reject things. Because I want to follow the Bible. You understand? Jumping like a monkey, in all honesty, at the end of the day, jumping like a monkey, it has no effect on your salvation. So what implication? It has no salvific effect, jumping like a monkey. Whether you believe the Spirit proceeds from the Father through the Son or the Father alone, it has no effect on your salvation. It won't call your salvation into question, right, as long as you're affirming the triunity of God. These are the issues that split churches and led one church to condemn the other as a heretic. Thank you, Gary Butch. Bunch. Jesus is worthy. You get beat up and die for him. Okay? And all this started because you had an Orthodox saying, those who believe, jumping like a monkey, those who believe, that part that says the Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son, that's heresy, they're heretics. See?
Are you with me there? Now, jumping like a monkey, I'm assuming that you're a Trinitarian Christian, right? Because even your name is kind of questionable. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. The church fathers were great men of God. The early church, these men and women were great saints, theologians, <clears throat> scholars, and believers who loved Jesus, filled with the Spirit, who gave their life for Jesus. I can't hold the candlestick to an Augustine. He's too smart above my pay grade. I can't understand much of what he writes or Athanasius. Lord forbid I'd ever put myself on their level or higher than them. Right? So don't take this. I'm not attacking them. I'm saying appealing to them doesn't solve problems. It introduces new problems, if not additional ones. Because you're all appealing to the fathers. You understand? So whose interpretation of the fathers is right? Tim Staples, Dave, David Armstrong, Scott Hahn, Trent Horn, Carl Keating, Patrick Madrid, these Roman Catholic apologists and scholars? Or is it your Orthodox priests, theologians, bishops, you name it, patriarch? Who's got the interpretation of the fathers perfectly sound? You with me there? Yeah, Anna. They will say that the church fathers studied the Bible in depth and they agree with them. That's what I'm trying to get at, Anna. I don't know if it's my point's coming clear. Guys, you understand what my point is, right? The Roman Catholics are saying the church fathers, when they are a consensus, when a majority of them agree on a particular tradition or interpretation, that shows it's apostolic from the apostles. And they studied the Bible and poured into it. And that's why they agree with us, the Roman Catholics, with the filioque. They believe the Father communicated the deity of the Spirit through the Son. They are agreeing with the Orthodox. The Fathers are a source of authority. We look to, but that's what their point is. We agree with the Fathers. You're contradicting them. How does that solve anything? You with me there? Methodius, you're the ones who are attacking Sola Scriptura, saying Sola Scriptura leads to anarchy and chaos. But surprise, surprise, appealing to the church fathers produces the same chaos and disunity among you all that claim the apostles started your churches and that you have preserved the tradition of apostles over against Roman Catholicism that corrupted it. It is you who are attacking Sola Scriptura, saying it leads to chaos and an anarchy. And now I just turned it against you. By your same measure, you'll be judged. You say a Sola Scriptura has led to anarchy. But wait, appealing to the fathers had le has led to your anarchy, where churches that claim to be started by the apostles split, and at times violently so, so that you condemn the other church that's apostolic, as heretical, which is why you're not in communion with them. And I'm going to prove it now. I'm going to use Methodius. Methodius, are you Orthodox? I'm going to prove it. You're going to you you're going to prove I'm right. Thank the Lord for you. Are you Orthodox, Methodius? I'm going to have to change the title of the session today because I'm already 77 minutes. Okay, Catholic. Okay. Well, then, see Methodius. Then you agree at the filioque, okay, right? Methodius, you agree with the filioque, okay, right? Hold on. Amazing. All this time I thought you're Orthodox, my friend. See, yes. Okay, so Methodius, when the Orthodox tells you the filioque okay is not apostolic, it wasn't taught by the apostles and rejected by the fathers, do you agree with them or do you disagree? Methodius, are the Orthodox right in their accusation against you? Did the apostles teach the filioque okay, and is it found in the writings of the church fathers? Did the apostles teach a filioque? Okay, and is it right, found in writings of the church fathers, Methodius? Watch here. Guys, watch. Did you see that, guys? Methodius said the apostles taught it, and the church fathers taught it. 
In other words, the Orthodox are wrong. Now, if I ask the Orthodox, is Methodius right? No, he's wrong. Guys, what better illustration of my point than what Methodius said and what the Orthodox are saying? Did you guys see it for your own eyes? Do you guys see it with your own eyes? King of kings, they mean something else. They believe the Holy Spirit is eternal. Okay. What more proof do you guys need when they appeal to the church fathers? They're either playing on your ignorance because you don't know the church fathers, because the church fathers do not solve problems. They introduce additional problems and division. Are you seeing it now? I want you to learn. This entire session, one thing I want you to take away is this point. So I'm going to have to change the title of the session today. You with me there? Everyone seeing this? Because I want to just make it this point for today. Methodius, let me, let me share something with you, Methodius. Let me ask you something. You, Methodius, if an Orthodox Christian comes to your church and he's an Orthodox Christian, baptized in the Orthodox Church, can he take communion at your church? No, Eli, Eli. Study the fathers. They're great men and women of faith. Love them, respect them, cherish them. They're soldiers of Christ. I'm, what I'm telling you is beware of those who misuse them and abuse them to prove their right. Methodius, an Orthodox church baptized in the Orthodox church. You sure you can? You positive you can. Okay, here. Anna Groin, a Roman Catholic baptized in the Roman Catholic church. Can he come to the Orthodox and will the priest administer to him communion if they know he's a Roman Catholic? Did you see? Anna said Methodius lied. She said, no, he can't. Methodius, why did you just lie and said that if you go to the Orthodox Church, you can take communion? Here's Anna. She's Orthodox. She said, you're a liar, sir. If you're baptized Roman Catholic, you cannot take communion at an Orthodox Church. No, you can't. She's right. Unless the priest is liberal. Did you guys see that now? Did you see that, guys? The Orthodox Church does not accept or recognize the baptism of a Roman Catholic Church and will not give them communion. They don't recognize the baptism of the Assyrian Church of the East and won't give them communion so that, pay attention now, if there's an Assyrian who's been baptized in the Assyrian Church of the East and wants to marry a Greek Orthodox woman and he wants to do it in her church, they have to baptize him in the Orthodox Church before they can do the ceremony. Did you know that? See, Anna just said it. Thank you, sister. Did you catch it? Anna just said, guys, here. She said, true. If a Greek Orthodox marries an Assyrian woman from the Church of the East, Assyrian Church of the East, she has to be baptized in the Orthodox Church for her to be even allowed to partake of the sacrament of marriage. Okay, I think I've established my point, right? No, they can't, Methodius. Methodius, stop insisting, no, they can't. There may be Orthodox that are liberal allow you, but a strict Orthodox priest and bishop does not recognize your baptism. That's why they broke away from you. Now, Anna, am I wrong or am I right? See, Anna's an Orthodox. She says, I'm right. Folks, what did you learn here for all of you who are listening? Do you see the schism, the debate, the division, even among the churches that are apostolic, meaning claim to have been started by the apostles? Did you see that? Number one. Do you see that? Do you guys see that? Number two, the second thing I want you to see. Do you see how they all... Appeal to the church fathers against the other. 
They're all quoting the fathers to prove the others wrong. So now, did you catch what Roger, Roger Shah just said? Anna, did you hear what he just said? He said, before the schism, the Orthodox was Catholic. Does the Orthodox Church claim before the schism, the Orthodox were also Catholic? In the same sense that the Roman Catholics are Catholic. See? Anna said, no, Roger, it's the other way around. Did you guys catch it? Anna said, Roger, no, we were not Catholic before the schism. You were Orthodox. It's the other way around. Okay. Okay. Folks, you can thank that Orthodox guy for starting this debate. You can thank that Orthodox guy for starting this debate. I wanted to go into the Job Witness Bible in the beginning of the, of the sun and use the Job Witness Bible to prove the spirit is a person. But he had to comment, and I actually feel at peace addressing these issues, right? I actually, right? I actually feel okay because it helped you guys who are not from, let's say, one of these traditions. You're not Roman Catholic. You're not Orthodox. You're not Nestorian Church of the East, Syrian Church of the East, or Coptic, to see that when they tell you sola scriptura produces anarchy and division, and you need the church fathers. What they're not telling you is they all appeal to the fathers to prove the other is wrong. Now notice this guy. So few churches since start of Christianity. But gazillion soul scriptura. Methodius, that shows your ignorance and stupidity again. Because many of the denominations that are included are also varieties of Catholicism as well as orthodoxy. And I know you're not that stupid to tell me that all you Roman Catholics are unified and are one. Now, Methodius, I know you're not that stupid, right? You're somewhat intelligent. Are you going to lie to us and say the Roman Catholic Church is unified? So I can now expose that either you're ignorant or lying? Do you admit that in your own Roman Catholic tradition, you have set of acantists who believe that the seat of Peter is vacant and all your current popes are anti-popes? And they condemn Vatican II as an abomination of the devil. And that you should stick to the Latin Mass. Do you admit that? Say, yes, it's true. Admit it. But I want him to admit it. Let's see how honest he is. Okay. Notice the deceiver. It's like that 0.1%. You see? He can't answer honestly, folks, because he just got exposed. Did you catch it? It's only 0.1%. Says who? You? You've taken a statistic? You've traveled all over the world to interview Roman Catholics? In fact, if we go with lay Catholics, most lay Catholics don't give a damn about anything your church teaches. And many of them vote liberal, vote for politicians who are pro-choice and use birth control because they don't give a damn about what your church teaches okay you see how methodius just got exposed folks he's trying to mislead you into thinking catholics are unified did you guys see it now do you see his church is more fragmented than ever before especially with this pope who's becoming a nightmare and putting the fear of god in roman catholics because they don't know what other thing he's going to say that's going to be her heretical? Right? Now, let's come back to the issue. Let's come back to the issue. Okay, what's the issue, folks? Let me repeat what I believe. Let me repeat what I believe. And my opinion doesn't matter. I'm not judge. May Jesus have mercy on all of us, and may he not condemn me. May he save me and save all of us. Here's what I believe. I'm going to have Protestants going to attack me for this because one Protestant did. He's saying you're too liberal. Let me, for the record, repeat. Let me for – see, Methodius, here I'm going to love you. Notice what Methodius said. Yeah, I don't like him too, this pope. Thank you. So what good is it to have a papacy? What benefit is it to you to have a papacy that doesn't do anything but cause more division and more confusion? Thank you, Methodius. 
Thank you, brother. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Are you joking? Less division? You're telling me the Catholic Church is more united now and it's less fragmented? Do you want me to give you websites and YouTube pages by diehard traditional Roman Catholics saying that the state of the Roman Catholic Church is at its worst and they believe that Satan has now taken over? What are you talking about, dude? What are you talking about? You may pull that on on someone who's ignorant. You're not going to pull it on me. So now, Paxo plays is a moron, an idiot, and a liar, use of the devil. You wicked liar. The 40,000 denominations, that list includes Roman Catholics, Orthodox, Joe's Witnesses, and Mormons. You wicked liar. That number is including even the different branches of Roman Catholicism. You agent of the devil. Don't think you're going to get away with that lie. Don't let me embarrass you. Okay. Got it? Okay. Now, for the rest of you, are you enjoying this? Are you seeing the inconsistency, the misinformation, the false appeal to church fathers that don't solve their problems? Are you seeing this? So don't you be stupid and be duped by appeal to church fathers because they're all appealing to the fathers to prove their particular branch of Christianity is pure and maintain the correct doctrine, but the others started well but corrupted themselves. Ex-Muslim, are you talking to me? I hope you're not talking to me. Because I'm going to quote Paul and Peter and Jesus prophets insulting, belittling, berating morons. And I, if you're one of them, I'll berate you too. Okay, God bless you, Michala. Yeah. You won verse Charlie. Yeah. Okay, everyone so far with me, right? Now, yeah, I'm a liberal. I'm liberated by stupidity. Lies, deceit, and systems. Okay, now, let me repeat what I've said so we can put things in perspective. This was a very heated discussion. I don't know if I should keep it because people are going to now start attacking me. You're a demon, Sam. You, I don't see Jesus in you. You're rude. You're mean. You're an angry person. You know, I'm going to hear it. I hear it almost every day. And there's some truth to it. I'm an angry man. I'm an old man, 47. I'm impatient, angry. And when I see ma'am here, sometimes I get angry. I want to block him again. Yeah, you, ma'am. Yeah, you. Just kidding, bro. Anyway, let me repeat this for the record. This is my conviction. If I'm wrong, the Lord forgive me and change me and convict me. I believe, here's my position. I believe there are true believers in all the major branches of Trinitarian Christianity. Trinitarian Christianity. You can even have people who are saved in, in anti-Trinitarian churches because they don't know what the Trinity is. So they're not rejecting the Trinity because they don't know what it is. And they don't even know the particular belief of their particular heretical church. But when it comes to Trinitarian churches, I do believe there are true believers in all the major branches of Christianity. And here's where even Protestants will have a problem with me. Okay. This is what I believe. That's my belief. That's my belief. Are you with me here? So I believe there are true believers born of the Spirit in Orthodox churches, in Roman Catholic churches, in the Assyrian Church of the East, in Coptic churches. Those are Trinitarian churches that affirm Jesus as the God-man. I don't automatically assume you're not a Christian. Maybe 20 years ago, I would suspect you're not a Christian. But I believe, again, if I'm wrong, Holy Spirit, save me, change me, convict me so I don't grieve you. I believe the Spirit has taken me to a place where now I see there can be true believers in all these major branches of Christianity. So this was not meant to attack any particular. In fact, I was responding to an attack by an Orthodox. So don't come and say you're attacking. No, it wasn't. 
It was an Orthodox that attacked Western churches, Roman Catholics, and the Protestants who agree with the filioque clause. I believe the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and Son. He attacked them as heretics. So I was coming to correct him, shame him, and put him in his place. So don't blame me for this. He started it. Are you with me there? Yes. Well, Anna Growing, if that's what's taught in your church, you believe that, that's fine. More power to you because there are churches. Uh, there are Baptists that are here that in their church are taught Roman Catholics are not saved. The Pope is the Antichrist. Same with your church. But they don't come here and air that out because there are some people that say, wait, maybe my pastor believes that. I don't believe it. I do believe they're true believers in these branches of Christianity. So he, my particular church may believe that, and he may believe that. I disagree, and I don't make it an issue. In fact, you're proof of it, Anna Groin. Though you may think I'm wrong in many areas, and I hold to heretical teachings, you don't think I'm so wrong that I'm a false teacher, but you believe I'm still a brother and saved. But if we're going to be honest, and we go to the historic position of the Orthodox Church, I'm not a separated brother. I'm a schismatic, right? And the historic position of the Roman Catholic Church, Protestants are not separated brethren. They are schismatics and heretics outside of the church and are not saved. You get my point? Especially the church of my parents, the church of my ancestors, the Syrian Church of the East. Orthodox condemn that church as a heretical church, and they're not in communion with them. That's why an Assyrian Christian baptized in the Assyrian Church of the East cannot take communion in the Orthodox Church and can't get married in the Orthodox Church until he gets baptized in the Orthodox Church. You guys know that? Clear? I don't know if even Protestant is still here. What about first and last? Yeah. Guys, let me know what your impression was with the session today. I went on tangents today, but I feel good about it, actually. I have peace. It's like, it's like the peace I have is like I should have addressed this. This was the direction I was supposed to go. I don't know. Interesting that your Orthodox Church would say that. Pretty good. But now, zero one, can a Catholic come to your Orthodox Church and take it? I guess so. See, like I said, but that only confirms the point even further. You have Orthodox priests and bishops that are more liberal and open. You see? So you're actually confirming my point. So you even have differences of opinion in the Orthodox Church. Some are more liberal than others. I actually went in Arizona. Okay, true story for the Orthodox. See, Anna Groin. I love this sister. She just said I'm right. See, she goes, I'm right. Exactly. Okay. Folks, there is a local Orthodox monastery in Arizona. The Orthodox knows that, right? The Orthodox know it. I actually went there years ago. Years ago, I went there. You know why I went there? And you guys are Orthodox. You know what I'm talking about, right? The Orthodox Monastery here. Thank you, Hosanna in the highest. I'll kiss your head. Notice, zero one, 01, Hosanna in the highest. Any Eastern Orthodox Church that gives communion to non-Orthodox and canons. Hosanna, can I kiss your head? I must have met Elder Ephraim. Okay. Thank you, Hosanna. Guys, did you see it? One Orthodox said, I'm allowed to take communion in Roman Catholic Church. Two Orthodox say, the canons of the Eastern Orthodox Church, this allows you to take communion from non-Orthodox churches. Man, we're all over the map. You catch it? Okay, now, coming back to the issue. I went to this, I went to this Orthodox monastery years ago. Do you know why? Here, let me tell you why. My friend at that time, he was an Assyrian evangelical. 
He was considering becoming a Greek Orthodox. The guy that influenced him was a guy that was into, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. My friend, my friend was considering becoming a Greek Orthodox. The person that influenced him used to be a Buddhist into witchcraft and all this demonic stuff, and he was demon-possessed. This man that was influencing my certain friend to become Greek Orthodox was demon-possessed. God bless you, sister. Listen to this. He went to the Orthodox monastery here, and they cast out the demons, and he got delivered. I know because I met the man. I sat with him, and we had a conversation, and he told me the story. And he introduced me to the priest that did the exorcism. I actually met the priest. So he was demon-possessed, and he recounts his experience. Demons were coming out of him, and he said they were coming out of his eyeballs. And it was the most painful experience because he could hear the voices of the demons fighting, warring not to come out. True story. I met the guy face to face, face to face. I met him and I met the priest that cast out the demons from him. So when he got delivered, he became a diehard Greek Orthodox Christian and apologist for the Orthodox Church. Now, he stated quite clearly the Syrian Church of the East and the Roman Catholic Church, they are not in communion with the Orthodox Church. They are heretics, and they don't recognize their baptism or their communion. That's why my friend, though he was baptized in the Assyrian Church, when he converted to Orthodoxy, he had to get baptized in the Orthodox Church. Otherwise, they would not accept him. You get it? Thank you, Anna Growing, my sister in the Lord whom I love. The Lord bless you, watch over you. She just said, that is what they do, yes. That is what they do, yes. All right. Now, folks, I went into a long discussion on this. Should I shut this down and start another session on Joe's Witnesses and the beginning? I'm going to have to change the title of this because it's been 90 minutes. I don't want to open up another topic. And we're going to have to retitle this. Protestant believer, first and last one of you, could you retitle this session? Maybe, you know. Oh, he's on? Okay, then I'm sorry. Yeah, he's on. Sorry, guys. He's going to be on. He's going to be on in – is he on now? Or is he going to be on in 40 minutes? I won't, I won't start another session. Is it going to start in 40 minutes? Okay. All right. Let me just that's we're gonna we're not gonna shut it down. Guys, again, let me just get a vote. One reason why I don't want to delete this is because my daughters watch this and they were excited. My angels who I miss and I ache for. I really ache for them, man. Okay. Should we keep this session as controversial as it is? Because I'm gonna get Roman Catholics, Orthodox Protestants attacking me in the comment section. I'm gonna have them calling me a liar. Wicked, heretic, schismatic. You don't know church history. You don't know church fathers. You're a fake. So I'm going to get a lot of attacks. That means I'm going to be doing a lot of blocking. You sure you want me to keep it? As long as it's going to be a benefit, it's going to bless you, and you're going to re-listen to it, hit that like button, then we'll keep it. Okay? But we're going to have to retitle it anyway. Okay. Now notice the internet connection got good all of a sudden. Glory to Jesus. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about then the spirit. Let me give you a few examples where you can use the Jehovah Witness Bible to prove the spirit is a person. The spirit is a person. And so we're going to change the title, Lord Ling, maybe firstborn, or firstborn, first and last, or Protestant. Change it to... I don't know what church fathers, the filioque laws, and the spirit from the Joe Witness Bible. Something you got to change it. All right, let me give you a few examples from the Joe Witness Bible where you can prove the Joe Witness Bible 
no, I don't want to do that, Anna Groen. They're going to think I'm attacking. If I put Orthodox versus Catholic, they'll think I'm attacking. I, I, I'm already going to get attacked for this video. I promise you. I'm going to get so many comments now. You heretic. You schismatic. You liar. You you agent of the devil. You dog. They're going to use my words against me. What's good good for the goose is good for the gander. You don't know church history. You misquoted church history. You, yeah, I'm going to hear it. Yeah. I'm going to hear it. Sorry about that. Okay, first, last, and you retitle it. Okay, folks, let's just do 10 minutes using the Jehovah's Witness Bible to prove the Holy Spirit is a person. Are you ready? Because I want to teach you how to use the Jehovah's Witness Bible to prove the to prove the Trinity. Ready? Okay. How can you demonstrate from the Jehovah's Witness Bible the Holy Spirit is a person? This is how you do it. You find those passages in the Jehovah's Witness Bible where the Holy Spirit speaks is spoken to, has emotions, and has a will. So how do you prove from the Jehovah's Witness Bible that the Holy Spirit is a person? You quote passages where the Holy Spirit does things that only a person does. Speaks, can be spoken to, has emotions, and has a will. Are you with me there? Everyone with me there? And you must also find passages where the Holy Spirit exhibits characteristics of personality with other persons. In other words, find passages where you have persons doing things that only persons do in the same context that the Holy Spirit is doing them, where the Holy Spirit and others are doing something in union. What do I mean? John 15, 26, 27 from the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Marcy, I hope this blessed you because you learned a little bit about church history. Roger Shaw, I wasn't really raised up in the Church of the East and understand what communion was. So I can't answer that. John 15, 26 to 27. Okay, here. Their Bible to prove he's a person. Because only Joseph wouldn't say the Holy Spirit is not a person. He's simply God's active force. But now you're not so much clueless, right? You're better educated, Marcy. John 15, 26, 27. When the helper comes out, guys, pay attention. When the helper comes out, that I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth which comes from the Father, that one will bear witness about me. Notice that last line. That one will bear witness about me. And then 27. And you in turn are to bear witness because you've been with me from the beginning. Bam. You ask the Jehovah Witnesses. When Jesus says to the disciples, you will bear witness. Doesn't that prove that they are persons? Although they're human persons, they're still persons because only a person can. To bear witness means, to bear witness means you have to have a mind. You have to have cognition, awareness, right? And intellect. So the disciples can bear witness because they're persons. But it says the spirit will bear witness and they will bear witness. So here's a passage where you have two groups, the spirit and human persons doing something that only persons can do, bear witness and testify. How can the spirit testify and bear witness with others who can bear witness without being a person, even though he's not a human person? You get my point? The spirit is performing a function with other persons. No one doubts the apostles are persons so they can bear witness. But how can the spirit bear witness with them if he too is not a person, even though he's a different kind of person? He's a divine person. They are human persons. Everyone there? Who's not getting this? We dropped. We were 120. We went down. Oh, boy. I'm trying to get it over 200, God willing. Okay. Now, Acts 5.32. Which part you didn't get that the Holy Spirit is bearing witness and the apostles are bearing witness, 01? 
To bear witness, you must be a person because you have to have a mind. You have to have awareness. You have to have intellect. How can the spirit bear witness if he's not a person and he bears witness with other persons? Acts 5.32. And we are witnesses of these matters, and so is the Holy Spirit, which God has given to those obeying him as ruler. Okay, now I'm confused here. It says that Peter spoke. We are witnesses. I, Peter, and the other apostles are witnesses. So they're doing what Jesus said they're going to do. They're fulfilling the word of Jesus. They're bearing witness. But not only us, not only us, the Holy Spirit also is bearing witness. He too is a witness with us. God gave us the Spirit, and the Spirit and us are testifying and bearing witness to Jesus. Is that clear? How can the Spirit be a witness if he's not a person, and yet we know he's a person because he bears witness with other persons who are witnesses? The difference is the apostles are human persons, but the Holy Spirit is a divine person. Making sense? Yep, I have been, John Wayne. Everyone clear? Are you seeing how even their Bible can be used to show the Holy Spirit is a divine person, an eternal person, and not a force? Even their perverted Bible? Andrew, I got a lot more. Hold on. It's buffering. Sorry. Sorry, it's buffering. But glory to God, when it's archived, the buffering doesn't show up. What you see is glitches. Sorry, guys, no more in my brother's place. God willing, no more. I'm done. This is going to make me want to kill myself. It's so bad here. Okay, Andrew, I got more. Acts 5, verse 4. God bless you, wretched. I'm going to be done in five minutes, so you're not going to miss much. Acts 5, verses 3 to 4. Okay, Acts 5, verses 3 to 4. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan emboldened you to lie to the Holy Spirit and secretly hold back some of the price of the field? Right? As long as it remained with you, did it not remain yours? And after it was sold, was it not in your control? Why have you thought of such a deed as this in your heart? You have lied not to men, but to God. Wait, 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 wait. Ananias lied to the apostles. And he lied to the Holy Spirit, and he lied to God the Father. How can you lie to the Holy Spirit if he's not a person? How can you lie to the Holy Spirit if he's not a person? Now, it makes sense that Ananias could lie to Peter and the apostles, they're persons. It makes sense that Ananias lied to God because they're representing God. They're God's agents. So when they lied to Peter, when he lied to Peter, he's lying to God because God the Father is a person. But why did he say you lie to the Holy Spirit? How can you lie to the Holy Spirit if he's not a person also? So Ananias lied to the apostles because they're humans and you can lie to humans because humans are persons. He lied to God the Father when he lied to the apostles because they were representing the Father. And you can lie to God the Father because he's a person. But how could he lie to the Holy Spirit if the Jehovah's Witnesses are right, the Holy Spirit is not a person. You got it? You got it? So he lied to three groups. He lied to the apostles, lied to the Spirit, lied to God the Father from the Jehovah's Witness Bible. So the Jehovah's Witness, he asked him, is God the Father a person? Yeah. So then we can lie to him. Were the apostles human persons? Yes, so we can lie to them. But how could you lie to the Spirit if he's not a person? <laughs> Support the police. No one should believe in your existence because you can't be human because you're a filthy, rabid dog, and your mother should be thrown in jail for giving birth to a dog like you. Get this dog out of here. Come on, guys. Faster. All right? Everyone got it? And someone said, you shouldn't be calling people dogs. All right, I'll call him a puppy. You're a puppy, buddy. 
Bow, wow, wow. Yippee, yay, yippee, yo. All right. Everyone got it? How the Job Witness is Bible is proving the Holy Spirit is a person? Are you getting it? Okay. What's the question? Go to Acts 5, verse 9. What's the question, medic? So I can lay hands on you. Acts 5, verse 9. I got to wrap it up in about 10 minutes. Why was John Wayne blocked? John Wayne is kosher. Okay, send Methodius out here because this guy's a moron. Only someone stupid like him who's a Trinitarian says, maybe you can lie to the spirit, maybe you can't. Get this guy out of here, dude. Yeah. And this guy's a Catholic Trinitarian. My goodness. Medic, what's your question, brother? Come on. Acts 5, verse 9. Hater Wood, don't let me do to you what I did to this guy because I don't tolerate arrogant white supremacists who are morons. Okay? Send me some of that money you make, that, that skilla, so I can get top-notch internet connection. And because of you, I'm going to have to shut down so that you can get all the tension with Anthony Rogers, you white supremacist, you. Okay. Medic is not respond. Okay. Medic said, JW responded by saying, sin crouches at. Medic, you still didn't get my argument, did you? You didn't get my argument, right? Medic, you didn't understand the argument because I know their objection. I quoted passages. No, no, it's not a metaphor. Medic, understand my argument because you didn't get it. Honestly, you didn't. I quoting passages where in the context, the Holy Spirit is doing something in union with persons. So you can't explain it away as personification because then you're going to have to explain it all as personification. So you didn't get the point. Understand my point, brother. Understand my point. The verses I gave you, apostles are bearing witness with the Holy Spirit. Who's going to explain that away as allegory or personification when no one denies the apostles are actual persons. Apostles were lied to. God was lied to. The Spirit was lied to. Who's now going to explain it away as personification, as metaphor? Because if you say, well, that's personification. The Spirit is being personified. He's not a real person. Then I can say the same thing about the apostles. They too are not persons. It's personification. So you didn't get my point. I am deliberately quoting passages uh, you didn't get my point medic I was quoting passages where the Holy Spirit is doing things in union with other persons are you with me there No, George Wagner, Wagner, you're trying too hard. Let's not get into this discussion whether animals are persons having personality. Let's, please, don't, don't, just stop. Don't bring that up, please. No, but you went to Genesis. Are you understanding my point or no? Did you get the point? All the passages I cited, the Spirit is doing something in union with persons. And an I slide to the apostles. Lie to the spirit, lie to God. How are you going to explain that away as personification? The apostles bore witness with the Holy Spirit. They were witnesses and the Holy Spirit. How are you going to explain that away as personification? You with me there, medic? And more importantly, metaphorized? Okay. More importantly, Genesis 4, 7 it's talking about a demon. When it says sin is crouching at your door, their sin refers to an evil being, an evil spirit creature, a demon trying to possess Cain. So it's not personification even there. The word sin there is referring to an actual evil entity, an evil spirit, a creature trying to enslave Cain. You with me there? Are you getting it now, medic? Are you getting it or you're not getting it? 
You think so? Think so is not good enough. Either you get it or you don't. What part you're not getting it? Help me out, brother. That's why it's saying sin is crouching at your door. Because it's not talking about an influence, an inclination you have. It's talking about a demon that God is calling sin. Now this demon is after you and wants to ensnare you. Don't let anyone tell you it's personification, even though there are scholars who will say that. Okay, so what are you still not getting? Genesis 4, 7, that's what you're referring to. Help me, medic, because my time is running out. Come on, brother, help me. It's not rereading Genesis 4. What part is not clear to you now? Come on, brother. Hurry up, man, before I start buffering. I want to help you out. Come on, man. I know you feel pressured, but come on. What's not clear now? Man, this guy takes too long. Okay. Oh, boy. Acts 5, verse 9. The evidence that sin is crouching at your door, if it's referring to a sinful inclination, it would reside in him already. It wouldn't be external to him seeking to control him. Why? Why was I called to teach? Why? You know I'm impatient. Okay, let me repeat that again. If it's referring to an inclination within you that causes you to sin, then it wouldn't be crouching at his door. It would be in him residing in his flesh. You keep focusing on Genesis 4-7 and you're offending me here because I'm talking about the Holy Spirit and you keep going back to Genesis 4-7. Let me try it another time, Medic. Which part of the verses about the Holy Spirit? You keep going to sin. Do you want sin to be crouching? It's because you're so fascinated with it. I just want to focus on sin crouching. Do you want me to send that demon your way? Why are you focusing on John Genesis 4, 7 when I'm saying, did you get the point of the Spirit? Why do you keep going to Genesis 4? Now, I'm going to see if you got it or I just wasted my time. How am I using these verses to prove the Spirit is a person? Sorry, guys. By doing this, you're going to learn too as I repeat things, something over and over again. Yes, Maddox, thank you. You've given me hope in humanity. You give me hope in you. Now I still believe there's hope for humanity because the passages I cited, you have the Spirit doing things in union with other persons. He lied to the apostles, he lied to God, he lied to the Spirit. No one denies that God the Father is a person and the apostles are persons that can be lied to. Then why do you deny that the Spirit is a person? Because he too was lied to. The apostles will be witnesses and bear witness with the Holy Spirit who bears witness and is a witness. Who's going to deny that the apostles are persons? Which is why they can bear witness and be witnesses. But they are bearing witness and are witnesses in union with the Spirit who bears witness. You get it now? You get it now? You get my point? Mr. Jehovah Witness, the apostles, when they bear witness and are witnesses, doesn't that prove they're persons? Yes. But hold on, Mr. Jehovah Witness. It says the Spirit is bearing witness and he's a witness with them. 
Now try to convince me he's not a person. Uh, Mr. Joe Witness, in Acts 5, 3 and 4, it says, Ananias lied to the apostles. And when they lied to the apostles, they lied to God because they're representing God. So is God the Father a person? He's not a human person, right? But he's a person. Yeah. Apostles are persons. Yeah, they can be lied to. Bam, I got you. It says he lied to the spirit. How can he not be a person? Bam, Jove Witness. You getting it now? See it, medic? When I put you on the hot seat and I just talk really rough with you, it shakes you up and rattles your cage, and then all that good comes out of you. I'm sifting you, baby. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling you and for me. And then you got this dumb brain dog, this dog who's foaming at the mouth, Leonette, saying that am I better than the fathers? You mean the same fathers that expose your church and you as a wicked dog? Bow, wow, wow, yippee, yippee, yo. Okay. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Why do we tarry when Jesus is calling? Come home, come home, children, come home. All right. I love that song. Yeah. Get rid of Leon, this dog who thinks the father's on his side, but he doesn't know the father exposed that he's a dog who's foaming at the mouth. Yes, I love calling people dogs because I love dogs. When I call someone a dog, I'm actually complimenting them because I love dogs. Consider it honor. Dog is a man's best friend. So when I call you a dog, that's a compliment. When I say you're a loser, I'm complimenting you. Do you know why? Because you lost your way to sin when you turned to Jesus. So you're a loser. Because you lost that burden of sin. Why do you take things so negatively, you Christians? I call you a dog because I love you. When I say filthy dog, it means I love you so much I want to give you a bath. What, what? What's your problem? You hate dogs? Sinners? And when I say you're a loser, that means I'm acknowledging when you turn to Christ, you lost your burden of sin. That's positive. So you're all losers. Loser. L for love. Leader, man, you guys always negative and attacking me. Okay, few more examples, and we're done. Because when we got to go to Haterwood, the ultimate white supremacist, racist, and we got to go support him, even though he's got a thousand and I can barely get 150. All right, amen, DJ Next. You're a loser, baby. You lost your burden of sin when you turned to Jesus. Losers. Yeah, there. Okay. Right. Couple more verses. We're done. Acts five, verse nine. Acts five, verse nine. Now, medic, you feel good now? You feel better? Yeah. Darn, John Wayne, you just broke my heart, dude. Acts five, verse nine. So Peter said to her, "Why did you two agree to make a test of the spirit of Jehovah?" Now, this translation butchers it and inserts the word Jehovah. But can I ask you a question? How do you test the spirit of Jehovah if the spirit is not a person? Test the spirit of Jehovah. How do you test the spirit of Jehovah if Jehovah is not a person? The feet of those who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. So the spirit of Jehovah can be tested. The spirit of Jehovah can be lied to. The spirit of Jehovah can be a witness. And he bears witnesses with other witnesses. And he's lied to in the same context that others are lied to. Right? To in the same context that others are lied to. This is all from the Jehovah Witness Bible, folks. Now, finally, two more for now. And we're going to relook at these passages, God willing, tomorrow. Two more for now. Are you ready? We ready? Are we ready for two more? Sorry, that's a squeaky chair. Acts 10, verses 19 to 20. Acts 10, verses 19 and 20. Jehovah Witness Bible. As Peter was still pondering over the vision, the Spirit said, Look, three men are asking for you. 
So get up, go downstairs and go with them, not doubting at all, because I have sent them. So the Spirit tells Peter what to do, commands Peter what to do, instructs Peter, and even uses personal pronouns, I. <whistles> Who does the Holy Spirit think he is to tell Peter what to do, command Peter what to do, and tell him, you better do it, don't hesitate. And notice the role of the Holy Spirit in salvation. I bought, brought these three men to you because I'm bringing them to hear the gospel. Do you see the work of the Holy Spirit? It's the Holy Spirit who brings us the truth of the gospel and the Holy Spirit who sends people with the message of the gospel. I brought them, Peter, to you. Now you preach the gospel to them. That's the work of the sovereign Holy Spirit. And because the sovereign Holy Spirit is the Lord of the church, he tells the church what to do, commands the church what to do, and how to do it. Did you see that? That's the Jehovah Witness Bible. Acts 10, 19 and 20. The Jehovah Witness Bible. Now the final one, Acts 13, verse 2. The Jehovah Witness Bible, folks. And there's a lot more to come, God willing, tomorrow. Acts 13, verse 2. From their Bible. Guys, be blown away. How much evidence, irrefutable evidence, God has given in their Bible that God is a trinity. As they were ministering to Jehovah, now remember the word Jehovah is inserted. It's as they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, watch. Sorry, guys, buffering. Sorry, guys, buffering. The last verse, rebuke Satan, Lord Jesus. And bless this session and preserve it for your glory. As they're ministering to the Lord Jehovah and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set aside for me, for me. Look what he didn't say. Set aside for the Father. Set aside for the Son. Set aside for me, that personal pronoun again. Set aside for me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. Wait, Spirit, why are you using personal pronouns, I and me? What, do you think you're a divine person? And why are you ordering the church what to do? And why are you determining who will go to do your work? Your work, and you determine who will do it. I want them to do this work that I'm sending them. You sure sound like you're a divine person who is the Lord of the church, who is God, who can command believers what to do and how to do it. And from the Jehovah Witness Bible. Clear? Clear? Even though the lagging was bad, we still got a good session in because in the archive, the lagging won't show. In other words, the buffering won't show. It'll be just like clicks. So we still got all this meat preserved by the power of the triune God. We love you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Just Google it. Uh, Jesus is calling. I don't know who sings it. Many sang it. So we love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. Save us from our flesh. Save me from my carnal, lustful desires. Crucify our flesh and give us the victory of the Spirit to walk in the life of the Spirit, filled with fruit from the Spirit, to worship you and love you and live for you and even die for you if necessary. Provide for our daily bread. Provide for our loved ones. Bless my daughters, Father. Bless my daughters, Lord Jesus. Bless them, Holy Spirit. Love them. Bring them to me and provide through me for them. And save them from all satanic influence and convict their mother to repent and fear the Lord God. Please, Father. Please, Lord Jesus. Please, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord willing, tomorrow I'll do the session at Child of God's house. No more here. Pray for me, folks. Monday, I'm moving. Hold on. Okay, guys, sorry, buffering, no more here, no more. It's terrible here. Pray for me. I'm moving to my new place Monday. Pray for miraculous deliverance. God showed miraculously for me on February 13, March 10. I'm sorry, February 19, February 19, March 10. God show up in a miraculous way and deliver me from my enemies. And guys, I want to mention it again because I believe God answers your prayers. If you're communion with the Spirit, He delights to answer the prayers of the righteous. Covenant with me to pray and fast. I get my girls so I can put them asleep. God save me. Use me for his glory. And I'm going to mention his name. And even if their mother listens, she needs to listen to be shamed to repentance by the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray Jesus will remove 
This man for my daughter's lives. Martin Simon Yako. I'm going to keep mentioning him until he's gone. He has to go in Jesus' name because they're my children from the Lord to raise them. He must go. Martin Simon Yako. Michelle, you need to repent and fear the Lord. Leave my children to me to raise them with the love of Christ. They need a... Please, Lord, let me get this through. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. They need their father in their lives, not men in their lives. Pray God will save them, bring them to me. Convict Martin to go. You must go in Jesus' name. Enough, right? Putting a dagger, sending me a text message saying, oh, Martin loves them and your children loves Martin. The Lord rebuke that. They're my children, not someone else's. So pray for me, guys. I need Jesus to show up. We love you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God willing, tomorrow, Lord willing, in Jesus' name. Now go listen to Hater Wood, that white supremacist.